In chapter six, you learn how to create a very basic preloader. This preloader consists of an animation, and it could be as simple as having the word loading blink in and out, in and out, and a looping script that will check and see if your entire project is loaded, and if it's not, it'll jump back to the beginning of the preloader and keep playing it until the whole project is loaded. This is the most basic form of, of preloader animation, and most projects now are built in ActionScript 3.0, which is more robust, and they can do things like have a preloader that shows you what per percentage of the project is loaded. Because a preloader's only point is to inform people that something is loading and so that they don't leave the page or the website or the project um, thinking that something's broken. So this, again, is the most basic form of preloader, and it's fairly simple and straightforward. The hard part comes in when you have to readjust and move layers around. So let's go ahead and look at the preloader that I've created, and it looks like it has a lot on it, but actually the only image here is this stamp picture, and then this word loading is just text, and then believe it or not, this is all font, and it's called postage stamps, and it's from dafont.com or dafont.com, I can't remember. So um, what it does is I have the loading text and that's going to blink in and blink out and then all the travel stamps and they come in one at a time and then just the stamp shape. So if I play this for you, this is the basic animation that's going to happen in the preloader. But this needs to actually go into my project. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. But before I show you those tricks, I have to explain to you why you have to do it this way. So let me go ahead and I'm going to show you all the frames that are in this movie, or all the layers in the frames. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to tiny. And if I click on the very first frame on the very first or top layer, and then hold my shift key and click on the very last frame of the bottommost layer, watch what happens to, let's say, the Trex info it stops right here, but once I shove these all over to make room for my animation, all of a sudden, all these layers like Trex Info and Trex Pick that didn't have all these extra frames now do. And so that becomes a problem. So what I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to create stop frames at the end of each layer so that it doesn't do that. So let me go ahead and show you, if I show you normal size, what you're going to do is go to the end of each layer and you can highlight them. You're going to go to insert, timeline, blank keyframe. So I'll go ahead and do that here. And what this means is that it's just adding frames that don't have any content on them. So when you do shove them over, it's going to still add all that extra time onto your layers, but it's going to be full of emptiness. So it should be perfectly fine. So blank keyframe, and this is F7 on your keyboard, if you have that functionality on your keyboard, which I don't for F7 for some reason. So I'll go ahead and do insert, timeline, blank keyframe. Same for the home page pick. And then finally for the background. Okay, so now, and by the way, this little flyout menu is pretty helpful. Um, it'll show you tiny or large frames, and then it also, you can do short so you can see them kind of more compact. And you can even do something like preview in context, and what that does is it allows you to see what what is on each of these layers. It kind of gives you a small picture preview. So let me go ahead and, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do tiny. All right, so now when I shove it over, and I know that my preloader animation is 90 frames, so I'm going to try to move everything to the 91st frame. And it doesn't necessarily have to be to the 91st frame. I could actually put it on the 100th frame. It doesn't really matter. So I'll go ahead and move it and try to get it right on the 91st frame. And it's actually on the 92nd, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. So as you can see, like with the Trex Info and the Trex Pick, um, it didn't, it did add all these extra frames, but because they're completely empty, my project should be fine. So you can come back later and you can 
shift click all these extra frames and right click and remove frames just to keep it clean but we don't have really a lot of time in this video so I'll leave that up to you. So now what we can do is we need to copy this animation that we have going over here and I could have built this a little bit um, a little bit better using movie clips so that the animation is not directly in the timeline but just for simplicity's sake and so you can see what's happening I built it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and right click inside here and do select all frames. Oops, and I'm going to need to do that blank keyframe method again. Insert timeline, blank keyframe. Now I can select all frames and then I can copy all frames and come back to my project and at the very, very topmost layer, I'm going to add another layer so I don't overwrite that one. Click on the first frame because that's where I want my, my preloader to be at the beginning of my movie. And then I'm going to right click in here and do insert or paste frames. So there is my preloader animation. And again, it added all this extra stuff that I don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. And we are good to go. All right. So now it's just a matter of adding the action script that will create the loop. So let me make this bigger so we can see what's happening. Actually, we'll do normal. Okay. So we have this stop movie and we don't necessarily need to create any kind of a stop here. Um, we are going to create a loop though. So I'm going to go ahead and do another layer and I'm going to call this preloader actions. So from here, I'm going to create a blank keyframe and this is going to have that loop script. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a script on this part right here that says if the end of my project is lo loaded, jump to frame 92, which is where my project begins. If it's not loaded, it's going to play, 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 play my preloader, hit this script and it's going to say rotate back to frame 1. And then it's going to do that check again and say, is my project loaded? If it's not, it'll play it again, loop back until finally when it gets here and it asks if my project is loaded and, I, and, it, and maybe it is loaded, then it'll automatically jump to the start of my animation. So before I can do this, I need to add labels. So I have my little frame label, um, frame label layer right here. So on this frame right here, I'm going to call this end of movie. So you can call this end, um, oh, this is not end of movie, this is start of movie, oops. Okay, and then as I move off, there's a start of movie. So at the very, very end, <coughs> at the very end, we're gonna go ahead and click on the very last keyframe and add the end of movie label. And so what it's going to say in that script is if end of movie, which is this label, is loaded, which means if it's loaded, then the whole project has loaded by that point, then go ahead and play, play the frame 92, which is the start of my project. Um, if not, then it's going to play this preloader animation. So right here on the preloader actions, I'll go ahead and open up my actions panel, turn off script assist so I can write this. And you have to be really careful when you're typing that everything is exactly as you see it here. So if frame loaded, and you're going to name the frame, so end of movie, and then the bracket. <coughs> Sorry, I'm kind of getting sick. All right go to and play oops and the play has to be capitalized as well start of movie semicolon colon to close that state statement and then we have a closing bracket or brace so what this is saying if the frame end of movie and that's where we gave it that label is loaded go to and play start a movie. So if that end of movie has been loaded, it's going to jump here. If it's not, it's going to automatically start playing this preloader. So now we need a loop script here, not at the very first frame where my movie starts, 
but at a frame just before it so that it'll loop back to the first frame and ask that same question. So here we're going to say go to and play oops one. So oops and that should have a space in it. All right. So from there, that's going to loop it backwards. Now, it doesn't mean this is actually going to show up, show up. If my um, project is not very big or not very heavy on the animation or not a big file size, then it is entirely possible that it automatically loads in it and it loads the whole thing in a split second. And so then it's going to ask this on the first frame if frame loaded end of movie, it's going to start the movie. So you could entirely skip the preloader because if your end of movie is loaded at the very first split second, then it has no reason to show the rest of this animation. So don't be disconcerted if that happens. What you want to make sure is that you have an action script at the very start of your preloader that's doing this question, this check, and then an action script before the start of your project, your actual project, that loops it back to frame one so it can keep asking itself its quest this question. So let's go ahead and watch this. So there we go. So it did that animation and then this, it, it would keep looping if the end of the movie hadn't been reached.